Yeah, I want to start just by saying, JC, that Shane Beamer, I think, has done a marvelous job this season, keeping this team together, focused really since that week three loss to Georgia. The season could have really gone sideways after that. The Gamecocks responded in a big way. To me, that shows that he can handle, you know, the, the toughest factor in, in being a head coach at the SEC level. That's keeping the heads of 18, 19, 20-year-old student athletes in the game. This is the second straight season at South Carolina seems to be hitting its stride in some fashion during the second half of the schedule. And to me, that's a sign of a good football team. But, you know, that being said, the elephant in the room is this offense. And I think Shane's going to have to make a tough call here in about a month or so with his approach offensively in 2023 and beyond. I've always said that Marcus Satterfield will be reevaluated when the season's over. He's on the last year of a two-year deal that he signed when, when Shane was hiring his staff. And there have been things that have shown me the offense is headed in the wrong direction before these two second-half performances against UK and a and So, JC, you and I have talked in sort of off the air about this a lot, and it's not really the play calling to me. It's just knowing when to feed your best players. Shane Beamer has alluded to this several times. The offense, to me, it, it needs a full-scale makeover. This isn't a Texas A&M situation where there's, you know, widespread – finger pointing within every personnel group. But I do think Satterfield needs to adjust a bit for this thing to really hit the levels it can over these last five games of the season. This offense has turned it over 17 times already. That's number 124 nationally. Uh, 23 points a game against Power 5 opponents. Trim that down to 21 points a game if you take away the kickoff return from Leggett against a and So to me, I think Satterfield might be caught up in who he is as a play caller too much. You know, he he seems a bit rigid in his reluctancy to alter this scheme in a way to, you know, get the ball in the hands of these playmakers, let them do their thing. You know, college football, as we've seen the last eight to ten years, has really transformed into a individual player matchup game. And my advice would be, you know, not to put these players in a box and and be handcuffed to this, this pro-style NFL-type scheme we've seen and just simplify things for the quarterback and the talent around him.